oppress them, that they are systems of violence towards them, that the education systems are systems of, uh, of oppression, systems that tell you that your way of being is wrong and that it must be corrected or educated out of you. You're outside of social, social safety net systems. When people go to hospitals, they're treated poorly, judged as drug users or as non-persons and sent away. I think that um, in Vancouver today, housing is a fundamental of citizenship. At the Urban Development Institute this year, Bob Rennie, the real estate uh, marketer for Gregor Robertson and Christy Clark, uh, made an announcement. After years of dodging around this question, he finally declared that Vancouver should abandon the project of affordability. That affordability should be something that is uh, the job of the suburbs. That the working class should live in the suburbs and the city should be left for the global elite for a, uh, as a resort city as he's been trying to organize it for the last 15 years. Two weeks later on CBC on the early edition, suburban mayor Derek Corrigan, the mayor of Burnaby, said that working people cannot expect to live near sky trains because this is prime real estate and they should not expect to be able to pay the levels of rent that they can afford with working people's or pension, uh, pension rates that they, that they can afford. That housing in those spaces is prime and therefore for other people. So if not Vancouver, and if not Burnaby, where do working people belong? Vancouver! <laughs> Vancouver. <laughs> um, the message that we get from these mayors is that real estate, owning a house, or even being able to rent a house in these spaces, is the unique providence of investor classes. Investors who are the only consumers able to spend enough money to buy these particular commodities. And maybe some people who are old enough that they bought land a long time ago. Others are non-persons. And the ultimate non-personhood is homelessness. About a month ago, the Alliance Against Displacement organized a summit where we brought together homeless people and evicted people from struggles from six different communities around the Lower Mainland and the Vancouver Island. People came from Victoria, Abbotsford, Maple Ridge, Burnaby, Surrey, and the downtown east side, from a few different struggles in the downtown east side. And we made, throughout two days of uh, eight hours of discussions each day, we made lists of the things that people said, and then tried to process together what was the most important thing, what was the most important sentiment that people shared. And the most important sentiment, number one at the top of the list was, I am a person. Before I need a home, before I want the stop, cops to stop beating me up in the street, was that people felt that their personhood was denied. It's because experiences of homelessness is a constant disavowal of personhood and citizenship. Every day, homeless people are attacked by police, usually in minor ways. But they are kicked awake when they're asleep under bridges. They're told, get out, get out of here, this is private property. As one man who was staying at the squat that I was at for 12 days in Burnaby, who was homeless, Muhammad, as he said, he explained that he has to sleep in the places that are most toxic, the ground that stinks of waste. And he wakes up with a headache from the waste in the ground because it's the only place where the police won't attack him, where security guards won't harass him, and where he's not in danger from bigots who hate homeless people. People also face social workers as opposition to the spaces that they need to access for survival. And people are forced to perform in subordinate ways in order to beg for things from social workers rather than demand their right because they are poor due to capitalism and due to an unequal distribution of wealth in our society and not because of some fault of their own. But the system of social work as it is teaches them that there must be something wrong with them and so they must access these things through begging. Feminist Anne McClintock argues that historically in these territories there's been a radical boundary of civil society, a rad the radical boundaries of belonging were about race and sexuality. That if you were native, you were outside of the bounds of civil society. That the laws that were for white society were for white society because they were against you as an indigenous person. 
and the laws that were for the nuclear family and for a heterosexual, monogamous, married couple with children placed sex workers far outside of the realm of being uh, of, uh, in humanity. To be outside of this belonging and this citizenship is to be struck down constantly. Laws are an important field that we engage this problem of belonging and exclusion. And a lot of those laws are the, are the sorts of things that COPE engages as a civic party. City bylaws, since the erosion of the, um, of the vagrancy laws in the 1970s and 1980s, have become the place where poor people's presence have been policed on the streets. In 10 cities, we fought against these city bylaws that have criminalized the presence of home, the visible presence of homeless people on the street, and courts have ruled that it's, a, that it's unconstitutional to move a homeless person out of a public park uh, if there's not appropriate shelter. But these laws have extreme limits, and they're, they're, buttered, they're framed by how far people can prove that they are not disruptive to society. In the court ruling in Victoria, um, uh, just over a month ago, was that if people are too disruptive, their well-being and their space in public is no longer tolerable. City zoning laws determine the boundaries of belonging by saying that three-story walk-up apartments for renters are not as valuable as investment properties for the rich. And in Burnaby right now, we are fighting against the, the demolition of hundreds of units of housing and if the new downtown Burnaby plan is allowed to pass under Derek Corrigan, a so-called progressive mayor, there will be more than 3,000 units of apartments that will come under the bulldozer immediately. Why? Because he believes, well, the philosophy is that this is prime real estate. The reality is that this is what the economy of Burnaby has come to depend on, is the immediate injunction, injection of quick real estate dollars. An eviction law is an emerging field that we are starting to tackle around this sense of belonging. When we fought against the court injunction against the squat, the 12 day long anti-imperial squat in Burnaby, we argued that the squat was a remedy to the harms people suffered under eviction, and that removing the dozen homeless people who were staying there would cause them further harms. The court found in favor of the developer, Amicon Development, who argued that because the court has ruled in the past that corporations should hold sway over forests, over indigenous people's use of them, and because the courts have held sway in the favor of corporations in terms of their access to minerals over indigenous people's access to mountains, the court should also hold sway and rule developers' access to housing in favor of people's access to homes. Our fight for homes here is that we want forests, not forestry. We want mountains, not minerals. And we want homes, not condos.